Hi, it's Vintage Computer Repair Time. I've got a Bobby Dazzler for you today. It's the classic Toshiba T1000 series. This is the T1000 LE. Oh, it's a thing of beauty, a joy forever. We're talking 1990 vintage, so we're talking 33 years old, and look at this bad boy. It's got a 640 by 400 uh, CGA display with blue backlighting. Look at that blue backing on it. It just looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at Oh, that's a thing of beauty, a joy forever. It really is. Oh, fantastic. Anyway, 80C86 uh, processor running at 9.54 megahertz. Yes, it was uh, turbo. Thank you very much. Um, it's got one meg of uh, memory. It's got, as you uh, saw on the side, three and a half inch uh, 720k floppy. And it comes with a 20 meg hard drive. So this was a serious bit of kit back in 1990. Everyone lusted after this one. It was so incredibly popular, the Toshiba uh, T1000 series of laptops. But what sets uh, the T1000 apart uh, from the others is that this actually has DOS in ROM. It's got MS-DOS 3.3 or optionally uh, MS-DOS 4 in ROM, so socketed in ROM. So it turns on, boom, instantly, just like that. You didn't have to load DOS from the uh, floppies or the uh, hard drive, which took uh, time time and, you know, space as well on your limited 20 meg uh, hard drive. So the 1000 uh, series, both the uh, T1000, the T1000 LE, which we've got here, and the T1000 SE as well, they were all DOS in ROM. But this isn't the original uh, game-changing Toshiba uh, 1000 series. It actually started with the uh, T1100 in 1985, which had a retail price of 1900 bucks, and it was MS-DOS 2.11 uh, and 80C88. Uh, processor so that you know half assed uh, 8 bit uh, jo <laughs> combined 8 16 bit jobby run at 4.7 and it had a smaller uh, screen of 640 by uh, 200 so the screen was you know not as high as uh, this 1100 but in 1985 that was the world's first DOS laptop you know and it was absolutely game changing but it didn't have DOS in ROM you had to load uh, DOS from the 3.5 inch floppy drive no hard drive back then and then in 1987, they released the uh, T1200, which is an 80C86 running at uh, 9.5 megahertz. So basically the same as here, and it had 20 meg uh, hard drive, but it didn't have DOS in ROM. And then the same year, 87, they released the original uh, T1000 DOS in ROM. But as I said, no hard drive. That didn't come along until the uh, 1000 SE, but that didn't have a hard drive. That didn't come along until 1990, until they released the uh, T1000 LE, if you wanted DOS in ROM and that hard drive. And the T1000 SE came along in 1989, practically identical to this uh, with DOS in ROM, but it didn't have a hard drive. And as was common back in the day, you actually had a uh, legend uh, overlay, a replaceable legend for your function keys here. And this one actually came with a WordPerfect uh, 5.1 overlay. Look at that. Oh, Bobby Dazzler, hands up if you use WordPerfect 5.1. Yeah, I did. Anyway, so it's got uh, indicators for power, speed, caps lock, uh, overlay, uh, num lock as well because it had the uh, numerical uh, keypad here. Of course, you couldn't physically uh, have that uh, separate, but this was a pretty nice layout uh, keyboard at the time. You know, it's got the um, arrow keys in the uh, arrangement that you'd uh, find it today and um, home end, page up, page down, and it's just, you know, it really is a very nice layout. It, you wouldn't be uh, unfamiliar with that today. So on the side here, we have a reset hole, then that looks like the hard drive uh, access you have to uh, unscrew that on the back here uh, we've got an expansion header and this one is in awesome condition check it out very common to find these these days missing the covers and things like that because they could easily break off but anyway uh, expansion header we've got uh, DC in then we've got uh, serial and uh, parallel but that's all this one did not have uh, the internal modem other models uh, did have that not sure if it was a retrofit for this one or not I'm not sure and if you want to see my initial uh, reaction video unboxing this uh, when I got it from eBay you can find that as an exclusive over on my Odyssey channel I'll link it down below and then we have a very nice removable battery here. Check that out. So it's a uh, NICAD, none of that uh, nickel metal hydride rubbish, uh, 2200 milliamp hour. Um, so yeah, this has uh, gone the way of the dodo. You could possibly repack that if you could get it apart, but uh, looks fairly well uh, sealed. But yeah, this is in fantastic condition. Look, there's absolutely no corrosion anywhere. There's no discoloring apart from maybe a slight discoloring on 
that, yes, my camera is uh, color balanced, so this is very accurate uh, color that you're uh, seeing here on uh, camera. And yeah, it just it's in really first class condition. Apart from this, which I noted in my uh, unboxing video, there's a little chip on here, and I did actually make that worse by rubbing it, almost as if it's like it's painted or something. I don't know what the deal is. I don't want to go any further on that. If you know, leave it in the comments down below. And yes, I did get the original Toshiba carry bag for it, um, and I did get some uh, floppies as well. So if we can get this thing working, uh, we should be able to um, do something. But anyway, check it out. Made in the United States of America. So you've got to remember how groundbreaking this 1100 series was back in uh, the mid uh, to late 80s. I mean, really, the only other competition was like the Tandy 100, which you've seen videos on, and also this Tandy 200. I don't think I've done a video on this. I'll leave it in the comments if you want to see a uh, teardown. But of course, this was, you know, the Tandy 100 and 200 with the bigger screen here uh, was an absolute workhorse, um, you know, for any uh, journalist, uh, writer, you know, anyone who goes on the road. Um, you know, this was the computer of choice. But, you know, once uh, Toshiba released this 1000 uh, series, and especially like DOS in ROM, it booted instantly. It was just the duck's guts. It was DOS compatible, and it just, it was way more powerful, and you know, it's, uh, there was just no contest. Uh, yeah, the uh, game was up um, for the Tandy uh, and other uh, laptops once this came out. Anyway, this is supposed to be not working, um, and here's the uh, power adapter that came with it, 12 volts, 1.7 amps. It is uh, universal voltage, so I can just uh, IEC uh, straight in. So. We can actually plug this in the back and let's have a squiz and confirm that it do doesn't uh, power up. What's going on? Yeah. Trust me, it did do something in the previous video, <laughs> the unboxing video. Oh, I have remeasured. I am getting uh, 12 volts out of that uh, plug pack, but it was actually flashing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now it is. I don't know why it didn't before. Uh, it's flashing the DC in. And according to the service manual, yes, you can get the service manual uh, for this. I do believe that is uh, like low voltage or something like that. So possibly uh, the plug pack is uh, dropping under load. So either the plug packs are uh, cactus or um, maybe if I simply remove, let's see if there's a load caused by the battery here. Will that fix it? Let me, presumably it works without the battery plugged in. Let's just see if the battery loads it down or not. No, it seems to be, seems to be doing this. There we go. No, it's flashing the same thing. So it ain't the battery loading it down. Okay, we'll power it from an external power supply, 1.7 amp uh, current limit. It's drawing uh, 80 milliamps and there's our flishy flash. Takes a while to come in. So, and I've tried another uh, plug pack as well. And it just doesn't work, so it doesn't doesn't seem to start up, doesn't do anything. So yeah, something's wrong, Ski. Let's crack her open. First of all, two screws gets that off, and yep, there's the uh, that looks like an additional battery interface or a uh, or possibly the modem. Yeah, yeah, the modem. Uh, option down there. So it did actually have battery one and battery two indicators on the front. So it looks like you could actually put a second battery, which isn't the same physical size as this one by the looks of it. So that's a bit of poor engineering. Um, is it not? <laughs> like, why, you know, if you're going to do this, why wouldn't you, like, because, well, you needed the extra modem interface, but I don't know, you could have engineered that somehow. Like, obviously, like, the pin spacing is totally different, so, yeah, I don't know what they're thinking there. Ugh, sell more accessories. Oh, I also forgot to show you the expansion memory interface as well, so it looks like you could put a card. No, it was none of that uh, PCMCIA rubbish. Um, and that was a custom uh, jobby. So I think you expand up to like five meg or something, which is <laughs> pretty kick up. Anyway, for you serial number aficionados, there you go. A TL1 system unit. The power supply is dated uh, 1990. So yeah, I believe uh, it's at least 90 vintage. And there's a little uh, DOS uh, speaker on it. But yeah, it, I don't think it had any sort of like sound, extra sound card uh, capability. Not that sound blaster rubbish. And there's your hard drive. Check it out. That's probably still got someone's stuff on it. Um, that is a completely custom interface. I wonder what uh, type of drive that is. There's no weight in that. Ah, oh, all the Connor fanboys go wild. Hands up if you had a Connor back in the day. 
Made in Singapore. All the best hard drives were made in Singapore. Um, a CP2024. Yeah, so I assume that's a 20 meg uh, jobby because that's what uh, came standard with it. Probably still works. I, you know, I think the tolerances in these that were, you know, <laughs> fairly large. So, I, like, I've powered up hard drives that are, you know, 30 plus years old. No problems. Okay, you're supposed to take out these three screws and the keyboard is just supposed to lift off, but it, uh, it doesn't. And I can't find a clip under here. Don't know what's going on. Yeah, unfortunately, even using my plastic spudger tool here, um, more of this, yeah, it's just painted. Um, so it just flakes off. That's a real shame. It was in perfect condition. Uh, it's all starting to flake off. Um, I swear I'm not being brutal to this thing. Um, and this is supposed to just lift off. I've read the service manual and everything. Well, that was one heck of a fight. And, uh, there's the, there's the damage to it. Although, um, yeah, as I said, I wasn't that brutal. But I did have to be a bit more forceful. Turns out, look, there are two plastic catches under there. And I could not manipulate them. Like any other way, I just really had to get in there and slide the uh, spudger. But anyway, there you go. We're in. There you go. Keyboard's out. And ta-da! Whoa, look at that. Toshiba Custom A6. Nice. Three of them, actually. Um, it is one the processor. Um, is that our socketed ROM? Is that our DOS in ROM? Perhaps? Um, that looks like it's in a surface mount socket. Yeah, so I'm not sure which one's the uh, processor, but anyway, um, day codes are 26 week 1990, so yeah, latter half of uh, 1990 build. There's our uh, one meg of memory on board, and there's the uh, expansion uh, socket there. So there must be another like surface mount connector on the bottom here, which um, you plug your card into. But there's the expansion headers over there, and Two 10-pin dip parts? What the heck are they? We have power supply over here. It does have an intelligent power supply, in quote marks. So, uh, yeah, look at those. Um, I like the fact that those caps, they're Nippon Chemicons. But I think, as a matter of course, um, this is a switching jobby, obviously. But as a matter of course, um, yeah, I'd be uh, sucking all those out. And the good thing is you can get these out without... Um, taking the board out. You've got to assume that there's something uh, wrong with the switch mode power supply, but uh, how it flashes that LED, like, you know, one like a supervisor in there, you know, is it that? Is it that over there? I don't know. Anyway, what is interesting is this long battery here says a sub battery. What's a sub battery? Um, I, oh, I don't know. It looks like They've got like multiple um, N cells in there. It looks like they've got five like N cells all in series. It's, what's a sub battery? What does that do? Oh, does that, oh, does that um, like keep it in RAM or something? When you do like a soft power off or something, does that keep the RAM alive? Then it boots up to its previous state and it keeps it there when you're like, and you can change the batteries and stuff. I, I don't know. Well, I totally missed it. There's the CPU down there, very unassuming. Um, but there it is, um, 80C86-2. Um, so that's actually made by Oki. So there you go, uh, Oki must have, uh, Intel must have licensed to Oki. I don't think I've ever seen an Oki uh, 80C or in Intel anything. Um, so anyway, that's very interesting. And what we've got here, these three are actually uh, gate arrays, so they're not uh, completely custom uh, logic. They just, you know, design it and then burn it into a standard uh, gate array. But effect, you know, it becomes a custom uh, chip, but it's not fully custom from the ground up. Anyway, this is the I/O uh, controller. This is the memory and bus, and this one's what's called a super integration chip, which uh, you know combines all the IBM PC functionality and all the rest of it. But uh, but it is. 
his uh, decently reduced uh, component count for 1990. You can see that, you know, like a third of the board over here is like just, you know, power supply and other, you know, miscellaneous housekeeping stuff. And yes, this is uh, confirmed to be the uh, BIOS ROM, so you could actually uh, change that if you wanted to. And this is actually the backup SRAM. So I'd say that's what this uh, backup, uh, this sub battery is for. It's backing uh, that up. Yeah, I can't think of anything else it's doing. And these two chips here, I couldn't see the uh, numbers before, but you can see these are actually uh, crystal oscillators. So there you go, 19 meg and 14.7 uh, uh, meg. And um, I've done a video on my old Tandy 1000. I'll link it in if I can remember it. It's where I uh, designed a turbo board for the Tandy 1000. And I was basically, uh, I believe this is for the uh, clock, uh, the, the bus uh, clock and the uh, cycles and stuff. And you had to get the correct cycles. So anyway, I'll link in that uh, video of how I designed that uh, turbo board back in the day. Anyway, I am totally suspecting these bad boys here. So I'm going to get that, that out. Is that just stuck? Uh, yeah, I think that's just stuck on there. And I'm going to get all those caps out and uh, measure them. Well, unfortunately, I don't actually have a schematic uh, for this, and it doesn't have uh, voltage test points in the uh, service manual. It's a pretty good service manual, but, you know, it's not, uh, it's not the duck's guts, though. Anyway, let's measure some stuff here. Three volts. Whoop. Whoop. Seven point what? Jumping between three and seven. What? Two? 1.8? 1.7? What's going on? Whoa, whoa, no, no. <laughs> this is where you've got to manually range the thing. 12 volts. Okay, that's our input. Why was it varying before? You saw it. That was just nuts. Let's go back to auto range. No, uh, you saw it. That was like flickering all over the place. Oh, sorry, the LCD sucks here. I think maybe I wasn't piercing the, it does look like to be a lot of oxidization on those joints. So I'm thinking, that might have been it. Anyway, um, there's our input there. So our 12 volts. Um, by the way, the LEDs, I can actually like I can actually briefly get it to like light up those, and I hear a I hear the floppy kind of like trying to start up, but nah. There's a five volt rail. Okay. So that could be is that I can't read that from here, but that's uh, probably a little uh, a 78L05 or something. Um, there's an input fuse there. Anyway, we're getting uh, 12 volts in. Let's see what we're getting out, shall we? Well, there's your problem. I really need to hold those there and press the power button. Oops. No, LED's turned off now. It does that. I'm not sure what the deal is. Oh, it's cycling. Those LEDs are flishy flashing and I can hear the floppy cycling. So it's doing all sorts of weird stuff. Wow, that's not a happy camper. See, why is my input back to 2.7, 3, Right, so, well, that's obviously not the direct input. So, I, yeah, that's one sick puppy. I was wondering why these caps weren't coming out easily. Should have just been able to heat up both pads and lift. But it turns out that the uh, there is actually a right angle. Um, the pin actually goes right angle through a hole in there. So that right makes it rather annoying. Well, you know your capacitors are uh, come a gutsa when in auto mode your LCR meter can't even detect that it's a capacitor. So yeah, there's your problem. Even though ironically, it was a long life and uh, yeah, this is actually um, Elna. Elna jobby. Fantastic. Um, But yeah, that one's completely come a guts. If I force it into capacitance mode, yeah, three mic. Um, <laughs> that's supposed to be 220. Oops. Anyway, um, yeah, this one uh, did measure low in circuit. Yes, it does have that uniquely horrible vintage solder smell. Oh, wow. That is... Oh, oh yeah, it's something to behold. Well, that one's measuring 196 ohms. Um, I... <laughs> I think that's a problem. Um, well, all of these Elner ones have failed. So all these brown Elners. Um, this one is a, marked as 120 mic. It's actually measuring 100. So I like you would re just replace it as a matter of course. Um, these ones, uh, these Rubicon uh, jobbies seem to be fine. But eh, you might replace them if you need to. So all those um, Elna ones I've replaced, but I also replaced the two N ones, which uh, still seem to measure uh, fine. What brand were they? They were uh, Rubicon uh, jobbies, but I replaced them all. Um, didn't have, I only had the one appropriate uh, through hole, but uh, surface mount is just fine and dandy. Make sure I've got 
all the polarity correct. Um, uh, thankfully, the PCB designer has put all the positive on the top side here. So positive, 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 positive. And of course, a trap for uh, young players with uh, SMD electros like this. The black mark on the side here is actually negative. It seems obvious, but the actual mark on, say, an SMD tantalum, for example, is actually positive. So very different. Uh, you can come my guts are there. I didn't have 120 microfarads, so I've put in 100 uh, mic, but that should be just fine. And if you just want to know um, how I suspected those electros, well, they're 30 plus years old. Electrolytics, of course, um, have an electrolyte. It's a wet electrolyte in there and it dries out or it could leak out, you know, leaky caps, are, for example. But just, you know, 30 years, right? <laughs> they can just completely dry out. And uh, these caps, you would, you know, it, it's almost universal that you would recap old uh, products like this just as a matter of course. And because they were so easy to measure, didn't and you can measure them, you know, relatively okay in most uh, circumstances in circuit. I've done a uh, video on measuring caps in circuit. I'll have to link that one in. And I knew that it looked like a couple of them were dodgy. So, uh, well, most of all of those um, Elna brand uh, ones were dodgy. So I took them out and yeah, sure enough, they verified um, they were dodgy. Now, I wouldn't suspect like the switching uh, transistors in here because like we're not talking about a really high powered thing here so there's not going to be huge thermal stresses on the uh you know on the switching regulators and stuff so it's sort of like i wouldn't bother like getting the oscilloscope out to like probe switching waveforms and stuff um you know first pass is just to re you know if you find dead electrodes you replace them then you repower it up and uh before you go any further and uh probe stuff so let's go uh don't have the battery don't have the hard drive ah power power speed uh no Oh, is it flashing? Is it supposed to do that? Is that normal? I don't know. Yay! There we go. Power speed. Overlay. Red, green. I'm not sure if you're seeing that. I'm not sure if that's normal. Doesn't seem normal. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, yeah. No, it's just sort of like resetting itself. Nah, the floppy's doing some seeking. And, but it should boot up to that DOS in ROM, and I'm not seeing anything on the screen, so... So, we're getting diddly squat. So I'm not, not liking that, that power speed thing is... Let's measure the values that we actually get now. Across there, 5 volts, that sounds good. So you're looking for 5, 12, you know, that, that'd be our input. Uh, what, this is our thousand, big thousand mic jobby. Okay, 2, 1 point, well, 10, 1, 8. Eight, no, okay, no, there's something, something jumping around there on that. Don't like the look of that at all. That's neg negative? Negative, definitely don't like the look of that. Negative on your cap isn't good. It's only half a volt, 1.65. No, negative 0.1, no, no, we've definitely got power 9.3, dunno. Yeah, no, we've got more power supply issues. That doesn't sound right. So I wouldn't go tracing, chasing anything processor-wise or screen-wise. No, that's obviously the power supplies aren't doing the business. John, I saw something on the screen. I saw so green came on solid for a second. I, I swear there was something on the screen. Yeah, I, it flickered to life. So it looks like the screen is doing stuff. It looked like it had some sort of text, but the contrast could have been like way off. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that again. What I've done is probed the backup uh, battery SRAM here, figuring it should have 5 volts on it, and check it out. It actually has 7 volts on it. Uh, I checked the data sheet. No, it's 5 volts. Um, that's bad. Oh, look. Oh, all those lights were on there, and it just went... I don't know what it did there, but it was not 7 volts anymore. It's now 4.9 volts. And I can measure that on, say, another memory over here. Oh, I, I was getting... No, that's down to 3.6 now. Uh, it was 5 before. Um, and, yeah, so I... Uh, what? What? All right, something smells, so I'm going to lick my finger, use my thermal thermal camera. Hello, that's warm. Oh, that's, that, that's very warm. Uh, I don't think it should be that warm. Okay, let's get out the real thermal camera, and you can see that, uh, sure enough, the inductor there is quite warm. That's 38. 
power it up again, but there is this is one sick puppy, I can tell you. Is that gonna quickly heat up any quicker? I think it's got a no, it seems okay at the moment. I mean it's warm, but not not critically hot. So but I think it gets into some some whoa, there we go. Did it no? That was the camera recalibrating itself. Nah, yeah, there we go, there we go, it's run away, it's run away, 50, yep, 70, yep, 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 65, yep, it's running away, it gets into something, some sort of mode, that uh, transistor, just, uh, it's a FET, because it's got a uh, gate drain source there, and, uh, yeah, it should not get that high when it's not heat sunk. So, given that, that uh, red DC in light wasn't coming on, Manual says it's supposed to come on when you plug in the adapter. Here's the adapter on the back. I've flipped up the back. Um, it was very easy. Just uh, undo uh, five screws on there. I've got nickel screen in uh, uh, case here. And DC in jack. This goes over to here. Aha. Uh -huh. More electrolytics. So, yeah, I didn't <laughs> expect that because there is no schematic for this thing. There is no power supply block diagram. It just talks about like, you know, checking uh, cables and, you know, stuff like that um, in its uh, DC troubleshooting uh, procedure. So, yeah, we've got another switching board here. So, yeah, looks like we'll have to recap all those as well. They're probably Gonski. <laughs> Are they Elners? Tell you what, I do like the attention to detail here. I was just taking out the screws on the board, and you'll note that this bit of uh, metal uh, here, which is insulated, uh, they've gone to all the effort, is uh, just held in with that screw, and that's just bent over um, after assembly to um, just keep the cables in place. And they've got another one over here as well, so you can just bend that, um, and just stops the cables getting caught when you're assembling the unit. Very nice touch. So, wow. Another complete switching regulator in here, and that is chock a block. That's oh, it does the uh, does the battery as well, and oh, this goes over here to the uh, that'd be for the backlight, uh, for the screen I would say, because that's going off into the hinge mechanism there. So. And this is the cable of this is the DC output cable <laughs> that actually goes over to the main board that we saw there. So, and that's got all the indicators as well. There you go. That's all your indicator driver. Wow, look at that. Yeah, could be Sutton Kamigatsu on there. Well, these caps actually measure in circuit AK. They're all uh, 220 mic, 25 volts. These two are in parallel here. I have actually uh, was actually able to buzz those out and they are in parallel so that's why I was reading uh, double and you know this one reads yeah they they read reasonable so I don't think I you know you might want to replace them as a matter of course but uh, as an immediate uh, haha gotcha nah well good luck trying to figure out how <laughs> any of this uh, power supply works we've got these uh, two boards here and there's a big board to board header there so that plugs in there like that, and then this has its own two separate cables coming out here. One says uh, charger, and the other is lead. Okay, lead's pretty obvious, I guess. But uh, one says, so I guess the leads are driven from oh, from this side of the board, are they? That seems uh, curious because there's only a uh, LM324 on here, which is a uh, comparator, quad comparator, of course, and that that will be doing uh, some, you know, limit voltage, uh, you know, comparison and uh, stuff like that. So, you know, if you're under voltage, then that's I don't know how they're flashing the lead because there's no triple five on there. Maybe no, I don't even have a transistor flasher. I don't think. But yeah, these two boards. They're interconnected, so we've got, it just says charge over here, this uh, power connector that goes off to the power switch on the uh, top of the unit. So yeah, there's the bottom of that, I've got a couple of diodes under there, whole bunch of surface mount stuff there, and no, you cannot get a schematic for these things, you can't even get a block diagram, and as I said, the service manual doesn't even have like typical test voltages or uh, test procedures, there's your uh, switching controller, it's all pretty uh, bog standard. Um, you know, a couple of MOSFETs um, here, and yes, I've measured 
these three caps here, and they're all like absolutely bang on. Um, like these two are in parallel, so I'm measuring 440 mic, I'm measuring 220 mic here, almost bang on in circuit, so I don't even think I'd waste my time trying to, you know, look, there could be like a ripple issue or something like that, but that's, you know, from, you know, high ESR and uh, something like that perhaps, but no, I wouldn't like to uh, bet anything on that at this stage, so what I'm going to go around and do is just measure uh, the MOSFETs, see if any of the MOSFETs are shorted, like just, you know, check uh, drain and source, uh, for example, and then we've got the ones down here as well, and there is a, apparently, I did, the only thing I can get from the manual is that there's minus 9 volts and minus 22 volt supplies in addition to the 5 volt and 12 volt supplies, but how that all manifests itself between this switching stuff here, this switching stuff on here, which like it feeds back up its own clacker and everything, and like I don't, I, I don't know. And this is supposed to be the charger uh, board, so you know, like you could maybe disconnect the charger board, perhaps because that's only charging the battery, but you can't because that's where the DC power comes in. So the DC power comes in over to this charger board in quote marks, um, but then. You've got all these pins going over to here, and then, like, how does it, does that, or the, I'd have to buzz out, like, all these pins on here, and figure out, like, is this how they're getting power over to this board? Or is it this one, here? Um, and obviously it's not through the lead one, but is it this here? This says charger as well, so this is charger, and this is charge, so what does charge and charger mean? I go, like, dumb and dumber. Uh -huh. Okay, I checked around, and the only issue I could find potentially with the MOSFETs is this one here, which is measuring 46 ohms uh, in both directions between the uh, drain and source, and this one over here, which was um, thermally, um, you know, which was getting hot, sort of like a you know, runaway kind of thing, um, it measures okay, but because it like it didn't get hot instantly. It's not like it was like shorted out and then you know connecting permanently connecting the inductor across uh, the rail, uh, for example. Hence uh, both uh, getting hot um, because it you know it seemed to like come like on like it seemed to be under some sort of like software control via the gate or some sort of gate control or something. So I don't know. My my first guess is is that is still like switching as a uh, transistor, but I, I don't know, it's, it's just ugly, the way it's all implemented. Well, I suspected that there uh, might be components on the underside here, given that all the uh, dense, you know, double-sided load that we've uh, seen on these other boards, so after a bit of, you know, I had to disconnect all these major connectors and stuff, really a bit of a pain, it's not going to go back in too easy, but uh, Sure enough, yeah, there's, whoa, whoop, whoop, whoops, <laughs> that's, there. that's some flux residue, is it? What is that? Or is that enamel? Is that enamel that's burnt off from the heating? Um, I don't know, but anyway, there's the back of the board, and it is quite, quite dense. There's some missing memory down there. Not sure what the deal is there. I think I'm going to have to get this under the Tagano microscope, but... Is there anything else related? Oh, what's you know, it's looking? Oh, some of it's looking very crusty. I don't like the look of this at all. There's a bunch of transistors down there. Wow, they're not kidding when they say this is a smart power supply. I really need to. I can't see this on the camcorder screen. I really have to get this on the uh, big screen under the Tagano. I think it seems that I have entered repair hell. Um, I <laughs> had a quick look online for, you know, to see if anyone's, um, you know, got a schematic uh, for this thing or they've done, um, well, I've got my flickering issues again on my ATEM, I think, to see if there is like a common fault or anything like that. And apparently, yeah, lots of people have tried to repair these uh, T1000 um, series, the SE, the LE and uh, the 1200 um, as well. And apparently um, these are absolutely horrible. Um, <laughs> the recommendation is 
do not touch them, do not buy them, do not try to repair them. Um, everyone's gone down the rabbit hole on these power supplies and nobody's really, you know, some times, yeah, just recapping it, fix it. Other times, no, it's these blowing MOSFETs. Other times, no, I re found and repaired, no, we had buggered uh, traces and we had all sorts of things and nobody's seemed to, you know, some people just, yeah, get, get lucky and get it uh, fixed. Others um, don't. So, yeah, it's not looking, it's, it's not looking pretty. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah, if we go down here, some people have said that Q502 down here, they have suspected, like, um, like somebody had a faulty Q502, had a burn mark in it, but I don't see anything like that. This looks, it, it all looks very horrible over here for the, uh, all this board, because, you know, did it all leak? On there like I have tried to clean it somewhat but um, yeah these things were like absolutely atrocious condition the um, like the all the joints had corroded and all sorts of stuff so pretty horrid don't know what this jobby down here does maybe something to do with the sub battery charger perhaps anyway it doesn't seem to be anything too bad there's our TL uh, 1451 switcher there and it's really nicer under the microscope like this. I can't see Jack on the camcorder screen. You don't realize <laughs> how many things I miss on a little three inch camcorder screen. It's just, ah, oh, it's just insane. Um, yeah, that, that five volt uh, regulator there works because, you know, I've measured the five volts on that uh, cap just fine. And this one um, is like, well, it measures 12 sometimes and then it measures other, so I don't know. So maybe that's controlled by this board you know what's it there's that lm324 jobby there and uh yeah so that's doing some rail comparison and stuff like that so it looks like there are some big trays this is the board to board interconnect but this one here yeah this one here is the one no oh, no that's the lead okay no i need the other board some just data traces on the other connector there so that's not how it's getting its power over must be getting it some other way. You can see the uh, glue on the bottom of the components there. There you go. That's how they do them on the double-sided. They've got to glue them down so they can. They uh, all the electrons don't fall out when it goes upside down um, through the reflow machine. But that 182 MOSFET down there, that'd be a uh, 2SC 182. It all looks good. And as I said, um, these caps measure bang on. So what you know, like, yeah, okay. Could probably desolder those as well, but nobody's pointing towards those. Everyone did point towards the old um, Elna ones in here, and that seems to be like a classic issue. All right, let's go on the bottom side here and see what's what. Uh, what is that? NEC A1600. No idea what that is. Um, and what's going on here? Uh, is that cap leaked? That doesn't look pretty, does it? This traces look intact, but oh, you, like that's like, yeah, really ugly. You can see, yeah, the caps have definitely leaked. And it's got all this, all this crud there. We can try and fix that. Just get some isopropyl on there and get my good hard bristle scrubber. But I tried this on the other ones and it didn't come up. It didn't come up that well, let me tell you. So... Obviously, like, there could be, like, some corroded... Oh, yeah, look, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely corroded traces there. No doubt about it. Yep, you'd have to go in... Yeah, you'd have to go in there. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. You'd have to go in there. Oh, that's almost eaten through, is it? That's terrible, Muriel. Yeah, yeah. We've got more than just failed caps here. There could be traces that are corroded away. Look at that. That's just horrible stuff. So, yeah, those caps have definitely leaked. I mean, it looks like there's some, like, complete breakages in there. Probably not. I, I can go in further than that. Like, but there, it looks like it's gotten under there. And it's de definitely started to eat them away. So, oh, yeah, there's that screen flicker again. Yep. Yep. This is, this is, this is not pretty. <laughs> this is not pretty at all. And look, it looks like some of the electrolyte from the capacitors has just gotten all over this. Like, there's, there's no other way to explain that, really. That's just not, that's not just flux um, from the soldering. That's, 
because it's it's not elsewhere on the board. Like elsewhere, like go anywhere else on the board, right? And it's clean as a whistle, right? Go up here, near where all the caps were, and like it's just ah, oh, look at all that crap between the pins. This is just awful. No, I'm not. I'm not liking this at all. See, this is where you start getting to the point of going, well, how desperately do I want to get this thing working again, right? So you've got to, I would now like go in there and start buzzing out all those traces that look, I'd, you'd have to go in there, thoroughly clean the whole board, better than isopropyl, I'll have to get like really some heavy duty uh, stuff on there. And I might have to check that I didn't lift any, I don't think I did, but I'd have to check where these caps came out. Uh, that those that there's still uh, still connection through the top and the bottom. I might have to like um, you know solder through those. But look at all the look at all the hairy scary on there. All these joints are all just corroded. They're all just corroded. They were horrible to uh, to try and desolder those caps. By the way, trying to heat up these these corroded joints is just awful. It's just like or you know just apply some fresh solder to them to try and like desolder them was absolutely horrible. So yeah, that that is not that is not pretty. So you gotta ask yourself, do I feel lucky? Well, do ya, punk? That's that's not pretty. That's all already showing me that I'm not really keen to spend a lot more time on this. How des <laughs> how bad do you want it? Yeah, this is definitely gonna be the end of part one. I'm not gonna chase that. Uh, red herring down a rabbit hole. Like, you can go, like, chase these charger boards. Let me go get it. Right, here's the other uh, charger board here. And as I said, those caps actually measure, um, you know, fairly decently in circuit. I'm sure if I took them out, they would actually measure uh, just fine. But yeah, like, seems to be nothing wrong with that. There's that 182. Again, 177 once again that'd be a uh, that's a Hitachi symbol old school I love the uh, I love the package like this why it's got that little um, tab on the top like that and the little cut out you know the little <laughs> groove down in there it's really quite groovy I like that package anyway that's a Hitachi that'd be a 2SC um, 177 anyway we've got a 5 amp fuse up there that just protects the uh, input Definitely nothing wrong with that, and so yeah, like you could go and tra you could go and chase like these two other boards, um, but yeah, I don't know. Look, these have been these have been hand soldered. Oh, yeah, you'd have to get that off. But without a schematic, it gets ugly to know how this intelligent power supply actually uh, goes. You know what the uh, topology is, how it all you know interacts and and it goes together what are the voltage supervisor functions you know and all sorts of stuff so yeah some of the stuff i was reading online like uh, people would have the same symptom like, like they'd have the same lead flashes and things like i did but it was some other uh thing and then somebody said oh yeah i had the same thing but i just recapped it and it worked uh fine and others were going no no i found burnt out mosfets and i found uh corroded traces and uh, once again corroded traces is is a big thing and everyone says yeah these are just um these are hell on earth <laughs> these Toshiba laptops <laughs> it'd be maybe a be better if you can get the schematic but if you do have a schematic please leave it in the comments down below but I don't I don't think anyone's ever been able to get it um and now uh, yeah we've got lucky I took that board out and flipped it over because yeah you can see how all those traces are just corroded there and you go to the other parts of the board and they're, they're clean as a whistle but yeah that's pretty sorry for those who uh, like the complete uh, repair thing but no I'm gonna call it quits for a part one uh, I've got other videos to do um, until such time as I get motivation I'll just leave it here and I will come back periodically and uh, have a go it's looking nasty how many hours do you want to spend on it Many people on many forums, <laughs> on many web pages, <laughs> have lamented the the fact that these uh, Toshiba T1000s, um, the power supply is just is just absolutely horrible. And then people apparently fixed all the power supplies. They got it uh, working, and it still doesn't work. Oh, as you saw, like I was getting seven volts on that SRAM chip, 
right? Was that elsewhere on the board? Like seven volts, it's five volt rate apart, right? Um, like maybe absolute max six volts. I have to, I don't remember the absolute max on the data sheet, but yeah, that's, that's not good, right? <laughs> that's not good when you get seven volts on your digital stuff. No, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not getting good vibes with this one. <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh, hello, crackety doodah. That's a diode. -y. I assume, oh, uh, we've got a marking on, on that. No, is it a diode? -y? Looks like a, I can't get, quite get the part number on that. That's Kamigatsa. It doesn't have a designator there. No, they're the two. It doesn't have a designator. But that is cracked. Well, there you go. There's one problem. But I'm still going to. I There's still a lot of work. To, oh, look, another one. Another one. Oh, no, the, these are caps. Oh, wow. There you go. Didn't see that before. People are probably screaming at me. How do I not see that one? Wow. Yeah. Okay. That is a tent. And it's gone ski. Whoa. Yeah, look. All in here. You can see the corrode. Like, even back this far on the board. Right? Which is a substantial different, a substantial way in. Right? You'd want to be buzzing out all these and checking them. It's just, it's made its way. Look. Like that, like that's black as the ace of spades, that, that via there. The joy juice has gotten in there and this is, nah, this is, <laughs> okay, this is getting ugly, yeah. Anyway, there you go, so there are two caps there, and is that, is that another one as, as well, like you'd replace any uh, art tants like that, um, as well, surface mount tants, so I'd have to look for others on the board, but geez, yeah, nah, this ain't gonna be a simple repair. That's for sure. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the journey thus far. Um, and I'll leave it at that for now. And I'll work on part two as time permits. So if you like the journey, give it a big a thumbs up. And uh, leave your comments down below if you've worked on one of these um, horrible Toshiba T1000s. Uh, which, which are great laptops back in the day. Uh, notebooks, actually. It was, um, I believe the term notebook was coined for the T1000. So, yeah. Um, and that's how influential these things were. Looking at those traces going, yeah, nah. Like, even if you get it fixed, like, there's there's corrosion under those traces. It's under the solder mask. It's like, ah, uh, like, it's, there's people on the forums who said, yeah, I, I fixed it, and six months later it was just dead again. It was just dead, and I couldn't, you know. I brand new capped everything, and I replaced MOSFETs, and I did everything, and it finally came to life, and it was just dead months later. So... Yep, that's once the rot started. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it could be the Chong X cap I put in there. <laughs> it's what I had. It's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, catch you next time. Hello.